Loot Crate here on Passage Skin. We are doing Loot Crate DX. Yes. The Loot Crate DX for the month of August. No, September. For, uh, was it again? Speed? Yes, yeah, speed was the actual theme. So speed, yes, we're looking for vehicles and fast moving objects and... Yeah, I think that's, that's what's going to be in this one. So, what's got DX? What's going to be so DX about this one? Let's find out. Let's take a look on the inside! Ooh, okay. So I'm... This is one of the things where I'm actually looking at the new crates. The... I've seen the DX crates kind of go in with these massive, like, print quality things on the top end of the boxes. I kind of like it. Back to the Future is really, really cool. Um, I think it was Deadpool, was it, for the last one? So, suppose. Let's grab the t-shirt and go out to the wide! How's it going, guys? It's good to see you again. Hi. Hi. It's all good. What's up? Um, I'm still, as you can see, in sick wear and making myself comfortable. Uh, we got both the speed uh, DX and normal crits at the same time this time. Um, happy about that because the biggest problem that I have is kind of like scheduling out these uh, videos so that they kind of go out at the same time in the same theme. Because I don't like going from loot gaming and loot anime to the loot crates and then having to do like speed at the beginning and speed at the end of the month kind of thing. But this worked out pretty well. Let's see what's going to happen whenever the rest of them arrive for the rest of the month. So, what is this? Yulden t-shirt with that in the front of it? A paper airplane? I'm not getting that one. Paper airplane? Paper airplane? Speed? I'm not, I'm not figuring that one out. What does that mean? What a paper airplane speed? It's not something like, not really about speed, but it could be a reference to, I don't know, Ferris Bueller's Day Out in the car from it, but I don't know. T-shirt with... Alright, well, anyway, let's think about what the actual quality of the shirt is instead of actually trying to figure out what the hell the actual logo brand is. It's a Gildan t-shirt, um, two colours, nice kind of like baseball-y top. I like the cut of it. I've actually had a couple of these over the last couple of uh, months from the crate before. Stitching's reasonably good. Not a brilliant, mad quality. I like the grey and blue. It goes really well together. And the print is, although I have no idea what it is, is a, a pretty good quality. It's a bit nice and well lined and nice and detailed. It's just like a good solid block print that's on there. So yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm actually glad to have a t-shirt that's not really that branded for once. Um, that I, people aren't going to go, oh, I know exactly what that's from. Um, yeah, cool. Let's see how, uh, I'm sure whenever I get to the wee pamphlet, it'll tell me more details. So back into the grid, obviously we're going to take the nice look at the big thing that's sitting right here. Check that out. <laughs> oh yeah, it's DeLorean. Oh man, that looks in that, that looks really nice. Um, I, I'm I'm looking at the quality of the paint job on it, and it's not not brilliant, but it's a diecast metal figure. Uh, I don't know. I'd be a bit be a bit leering about the quality of this being. Anyway, good. Admittedly, the original DeLorean itself wasn't that amazing of a car either, so what have I got really to complain about over here? I mean, pff, yeah. There's three versions of it currently. Alright, so which one's this one? This one is uh, Back to the Future 1. This is the original Back to the Future, I think. Yeah. I think it is. Is it the original? So look at the back of it. There's a design, like all three of the designs are actually on the back, and it shows. Back to Future 1, 2, and 3, essentially. Uh, one with the hook in the back, so that it actually could be used to kind of like get them to Back to the Future. Uh, second one has, of course, the Mr. Fusion. And then the third one's got the hover car modification, I think. Oh, no, no, it's the, it's the railway wheels one for um, the third one. Uh, with the, like, the circuit board made out of like massive electronics sitting on the front of it. Well, so according to this, accessory is attached, so... It has to be the one from the first movie. It looks like it because I don't see anything else that's actually recognizable. But yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, nice big size figure. I mean, that's the biggest thing about Loot Crate DX objects. They kind of have to be at least a little bit bigger than the uh, stuff that we're getting otherwise in Ordinary Loot Crate. Nice and weighty. Um, I'm, the only thing I'm disappointed about is what is... like The doors are obviously shut. They don't open. The detail, the paint job in this is less than ideal. I can see spotting all over the body of the car, all around the edges of anywhere there's actually maybe trimmed on. 
Um, it's a cheap figure from Welling. It's <laughs> the company that does these. Yeah. Uh, it says not for people three years and up, but according to this, it's eight and up as well. Uh, branding, guys, you need to actually figure that out, stuff out. What can I say? It's a, I love the movie, and the, the Back to the Future films are absolute classics, so why, why wouldn't I be happy to get a car? But I don't see the quality actually really kind of paying up for the price. I mean, if, if, this, if that was meant to be a $40 object, I'm surprised, because I'm on the bed you could probably get it for cheaper. So our next object is my Art of Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah, um, I, I'm not a big fan of coffee table books. But this one is less, because I've seen this actually um, floating about in news agents and stuff. It's less a uh, coffee table book of just images. It's more like storyboarding and uh, interviews and small detail bits. A lot of interviews and stuff in this, of course, plenty of like photographs and reference materials, but a lot of like uh, articles talking about individual cars, individual vehicles from the film. Uh, they've actually been named and they're detailed. So, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to sitting and rewatching. Uh, Mad Max Fury Road in the black and white version because apparently it's uh, getting a theatrical release in some places so I'm keeping an eye to the ground eye to the ground? ear to the ground eye to the horizon trying to make sure I catch it whenever it comes out uh, I'll, I'll have a read through that but um, it probably will end up on the shelf at the back there and never ever touched again after I've had my first perusal that's the that's biggest problem I have with the coffee table books things I really like the Bioshock one because it was a really vivid and interesting world but it's still definitely a coffee table, kind of like, look at what I've got, put it down kind of thing. I'd read the hell out of one of these, and like a dentist surgery or a doctor surgery. I would never get one myself otherwise. So yeah, Mad Max, The Art of Fury Road. Fair play, that's pretty good. So what else we got in here? We got ourselves, of course, the pin for the mega pins for the DX crates. Always a much bigger size. This one is, it looks like the red car from the other loot crate uh, that I did. Um, just uh, done as a pin size now. So yeah, bit of a Mad Max Fury Road kind of look. DX doesn't do an uh, added value item with your pin, so it's just a big pin. The so pin collection is continuing to grow, but I'm um, not too concerned about it. So what the hell is this? It's a big messenger bag with an Autobot logo on it. Yeah, um, I really liked the, the bag that came with the Halo Founder Crate. I was a big fan of it because uh, I needed something that was actually small, compact, useful, and I've been using it constantly. Uh, just having a wee single strap bag like that has been really, really a, a quick godsend for me because it allows me to carry uh, my sound gear, my little portable recorder, my uh, tablet computer, and a book and a drink, and kind of like, that's my, that's like, that's my go bag if I need to go, if I'm going out and doing stuff. It's like a convenient bag. It looks weird as hell on me because I'm actually a big guy, so it's a wee tiny bag strapped around me. Uh, girlfriend's been giving me nothing but shit about it since I started wearing it. But this one is obviously not quite like that. This is a big bag. It's a big messenger bag. Oh, wow. Actually, I, I, was, I was concerned whenever I looked at it that it was just this logo at the front. That was the only thing. Like, that was the only thing that was actually being shown. But, yeah, that is actually kind of nice, guys. That's actually, I like that one. I like the design. I like the artwork on the inside of it. It feels good and weighty. Um, this will probably be um, a small equipment bag for me. Uh, it'll be something that I can carry. Um, it's, well, since you're thinking like, uh, spare bulbs for lighting or a uh, small shoulder rig or so on, this will be carrying bits and pieces like that. This will actually be, it'll be more, less of a laptop bag, more of a kit gear bag for me to carry around. Although, I'd be concerned because it looks so nice. Somebody might actually grab this bag. Even has, uh, it looks like meant to be Optimus Prime, but it kind of looks like Soundwave in the front of it as well. Look, it looks a bit pinched to be Optimus Prime, but the interior artwork is nice and scratchy, cool um, design of Transformers. I think you can see Megatron and Prime, and that's pretty much, I think there's actually like a repeating pattern on the inside of it, but yeah, that's actually a pretty decent messenger bag. I have, how many pockets are in it? Like there's essentially, it's a school bag. So I imagine there's a plenty of people who actually probably got this and then immediately give it to their children, you know? Which is, well, a little bit disappointing because I always wanted the DX thing to be less of a kid-friendly uh, object as the main crate is. I wanted it to be something that was um, a little bit more refined. But uh, of course, our level of maturity in general is quite low these days, so who particularly thinks about getting something for the adults. Like the drinking glasses from 
the first crate, the World of Warcraft ones. Um, still using them, still enjoying the hell out of them. Love my whiskey stones, thought they were brilliant. Still use the hell out of them. Everything from any of the crates since, not really touched. Just because because uh, the, my complaint from the second crate onwards was very much this feels just like a more expensive version of what you're already giving me in the other crates. So, according to this, the Back to the Future DeLorean actually opens its doors. Like, it actually shows in an image the doors opening. If I take that out, because it, it looks like it's actually got a wee, it's a wee seal around the edge where it looks like where the paint has actually gone over from the door to the frame of the car. So, unless, like, I, that's on that would really start to annoy me if they start lying on the this stuff. Uh, ba -ba -ba, Super 7, paper airplane. Right? Paper planes aren't necessarily a thing people think about often, but for a lot of kids, it's their first experience with speed. We salute the simple joy of paper plane. Perfect paper flight with a shirt. What? That makes no... Good grief. Speed. So, like, a paper airplane. It's first experience of speed. That has... No, uh, don't even start me. Right, so, uh, Art of Mad, Mad, Art of Mad Max Fury Road soft cover book. Soft cover book, but they view an image of the hardcover version on the actual leaflet. Guys, come on. This is actually like, this is simple goddamn shit. Seriously. Don't get your, don't get your marking materials wrong. Like, don't make me lift something out of the goddamn box and then look at something that you probably printed weeks earlier that actually had another object that you were going to put into it. That is fucked, man. This one's pin. Vroom, vroom. We advise everyone obey speed limits, but you can always feel like you're in the fast lane with this hot rod. Wow, stop talking to people like they're fucking children, man. Blue Crate DX exclusive pattern and patch. So the patch, the squished faced version of Optimus Prime, is the exclusive, along with the pattern on the inside. Treat your belongings to great ride in this sleek Autobot bag, outfitted with magnetic clasps, dual attachment buckles, compartments for your laptop and accessories. Especially designed interior, blah, blah, blah. Fuck. Yeah, man. Loot Crate DX has been an object failure in a lot of ways. Loot Crate in general is an object failure. I'm personally kind of like getting done with their shit. I'm getting done with their objects. This is not i i think the competition for subscription crates has gotten that much bigger since loot crate started that they really have pretty much i think they're running the clock now for a lot of this stuff they're just running the clock out until the subscriptions are over and people don't re-up that's what their big thing is they're probably just gone you know what if people aren't going to re-up to us then that's it. The world, the company closes down. It feels like a run and gun kind of like we'll get as much money as we can at the time. Um, probably for the last sixty eight months, it really feels like they've been cutting corners in a lot of spots. Maybe I don't know, but the idea, like, amount of crates, massive amount of crates come out in the year, and they can't maintain any sort of quality control even on their DX crates. Here's another question: Where is the wrapping? That normally went inside these crates. Well, where did they go with it? They decided like oh, apparently that that extra bit of paper was costing them too much. That the that's the one thing that actually maintained a little bit of mystery about these crates. Because the smaller crates you can kind of hold the lid over and you can reach in and pull stuff out. These are too big, you can't open them up and actually be able to reach in. Because once you open them up, you see in the interiors, you see everything's inside. So that wrapping had an aesthetic and meticulous piece to me. Like, I mean, it's a, it was something that I kind of like slide my hand underneath and reveal stuff to you guys, but that's gone. Uh, yeah, I think, I think the Loot Crate wagon is pulling into the station and we're almost done with it. So guys, that's been Loot Crate DX speed for the month of September. Horribly disappointing on all accounts. So, Let's hope Loot Gaming or Loot Anime has something to redeem itself with. Um, of course, there is Loot Wearables as well this month. I got them in and I'm not even going to show them to you guys because they are the wrong sizes that I ordered. 
They're um, not fit for purpose, really. Honestly, I've seen co- I've seen really, really first time cosplayers put together pieces of clothing much more, much better quality, like their first time ever sewing kind of quality. So yeah, the this the loot crate is kind of sucking at the moment. I would n- not recommend anybody to sign up for them if you're um, contemplating it. I'd I wouldn't recommend it. You're better off seeing anything that you really like in any of these crates after the fact. Go and eBay them because a lot of them are going up online. People, if there's anything you particularly want that you really liked out of them, you can find them afterwards. The pay up front, not knowing anymore, is actually like too destructively worth it. So guys, I will continue on doing these crates, but I'm going to care less and less as time goes by if they don't find anything that intrigues me. So guys, thanks very much for watching. Remember, you can always sign up to any of the links on the side and you can always get a hold of me. There'll be more videos up all through the week here on Past Teacher Skin. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Bye.